you are one video away yeah. from changing your life yeah. on YouTube. In three days, it exploded. TikTok had banned me from their platform and I went all in on YouTube. Had to figure out shorts. These platforms don't care about positive engagement or negative engagement. They just want engagement. And so some of the ways that I do this is I'll mispronounce words on purpose. It's easier to get people to correct you, point out your flaws, assert their ego based on their own personal anecdotal evidence. You're interneting at a very high level. Imagine this, your YouTube channel grows 500,000 subscribers in just eight months. It sounds insane, but today's guest on the Think Media podcast experienced that very thing. But it gets crazier. From creating short form vertical content and using some of the psychological tricks, video tactics, and general overall strategies with what's happening right now in social media, his brand has been blowing up across Facebook, TikTok, and YouTube. And in this episode, Austin Armstrong is going to be breaking down everything that's been happening. So you can apply that to your business, your personal brand and go further faster. So Austin, welcome to the show. Sean, thank you so much for having me, man. This is amazing. Man, so I'm super fired up to be talking to you. In fact, let's just start with this YouTube story because mm -hmm. people on our channel, uh, they're trying to blow their YouTube up and tell us the story of what happened, how it happened, but also you had a, a sprint of growth, but that's not when you started. Like how long did it take you to get your first thousand, 5,000 subscribers? Three years to get to 5,000 subscribers. And, and honestly, it happened because of TikTok a little bit, just having it linked in that bio. It was driving more subscribers. It wasn't really my long form content or anything like that. And then, yeah, in, in three days, uh, it, it exploded. Um, just went all in on YouTube shorts. Wow, and what niche were you doing? What kind of content were you sharing on YouTube? So mostly useful websites for business owners, entrepreneurs, sharing SaaS tools, very much listicle oriented content, top five stuff. Okay, so you that's the niche. It took a while to grow, but then all of a sudden in eight months, yeah. you grow 500,000 subscribers. What happened? So TikTok had banned me from their platform, which is just crazy. They've restored it. It's actually been deleted twice, uh, which is wild. But yeah, when that happened, I had all of this extra free time to create content. I was a little mad at TikTok at the time, said, you don't want my content? Okay, I'm going to take it somewhere else. I'm going to go in on, on another platform. And I went all in on YouTube, had to figure out shorts. Um, and so that's when, so I had uploaded 600 shorts beforehand before I actually, it clicked for me. Wow. And so I was uploading everything and anything. I was repurposing everything over from TikTok, even if it wasn't, it was all digital marketing related, but it wasn't super niche focused. And so it took 600 lessons learned to say, this is not working. I need to figure out what's working. So I only took my uh, my videos that were the most viral on TikTok and were working on Instagram and, and Facebook a little bit too at that point. And those were the top five useful websites videos. And so I only uploaded one video or I think I went up to two or three per day. Only top five useful websites videos. And in three days, uh, it exploded. One of the videos took off. It did uh, 11 million views wow. uh, in, in a couple days. And it a crazy, crazy story here. It happened while I was on a trip with my wife in Mexico. Jeez. So we're sitting on the beach and uh, it's going viral for me. I'm, I'm refreshing YouTube studio app on my phone and I'm like, honey, look, I'm going viral on YouTube. This is crazy. And she's like, yeah, but we're in Mexico on vacation. Yeah. So it's just, That's it's wild. just wild, but. And you broke down like a Twitter thread with some of these tips. Was there a connection of short form and long form? Yeah. So uh, one of the best ways that I that I made that I bridged that gap is one, I was just I just started creating long form content that was similar to the shorts content as well. So it wasn't too disjointed for the audience. Yeah. And then I leveraged uh, uh, the description of that video and a pinned comment on the actual short that linked back to a longer expanded video as well. So you want more tutorials or a longer demo of the websites that I'm sharing or even more websites on this topic go check out that long form video. And, and it increased views and subscribers quite a lot. And the, the top video I had on my profiles, like the channel view uh, or the channel trailer uh, video was a, was a useful website video as well. So they, they saw my viral short, they went to my profile to check it out and they looked at all my other long form content. That's powerful. And so it was a top five useful websites for like business owners on a short. And then it was the expanded version on a long yep. and pin comment and your channel just blows up in eight months. Was it a few shorts that brought a lot of the subscribers? Yeah, so the, the one that went viral uh, 
which is a 50 second video, drove about 270,000 subscribers. Wow. Which is you know, crazy. That's funny too, because we always say you, you are one video away yeah. from changing your life yeah. on YouTube. And it might be video number 653, but it, it things can really change when you crack that code. So that's yeah. pretty inspiring. Yeah, it was it, it was fascinating too. So what happened is when that one video had had popped, it sort of unlocked my channel. So all of the other related top five website videos started to explode as well. They weren't mm. as 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 high as that one, but it all unlocked the the short shelf for me. So the view source wasn't from suggested, it wasn't from browse, it was from shorts and all of a sudden it exploded. So that one video unlocked all of the other related videos on that channel. And so the the views across the board were skyrocketing. That's wild. Okay, so that's amazing. Now, one of the things that you actually shared last night at the speaker party and we were hanging out was, it wasn't just great content. You've also been studying, learning, mm -hmm. investing yourself. Michael Stelzner asked, you know, where did you learn everything you learned? You'd be like, I've been going to events. I've yeah. I've been testing, I've been experimenting, and as I found things that work, I've doubled down on those. But one of the things you mentioned was there's a few psychological tricks that you'll include into some of your vertical videos and videos in general. What are some of those? Yeah, so I, I found out that it's easier to get people to correct you, point out your flaws, assert your ego, assert their ego based on their own personal anecdotal evidence. Uh, it's easier to get that than positive reinforcement. Mm. Content is like, I agree with you. Sure. And so I troll the trolls. So I, I pull that out because these platforms don't care about positive engagement or negative engagement. They just want engagement. Mm -hmm. And so I leaned into getting more engagement for my content. And so some of the ways that I do this is I'll mispronounce words on purpose. I'll share useful websites like answersocrates.com and I'll say answer Socrates. Yeah. And I have people run to the comments and they, you know, forcibly correct me. How dare you mispronounce the legendary philosopher's name? <laughs> and they'll and they'll phonetically spell it out, Socrates. Yeah. So it, and it I'll thumbs it up and yeah. yeah okay. Yeah, and and uh, I'll also share, I'll sneak in folders right below the URL that I share. Yeah. And it'll be something very suspect, like Mr. Beast, N-U-D, dot, dot, dot. Yeah. Or I'll go on Google Trends and I'll see what influential person or celebrity is trending at that time. So it's top of everyone's mind. Yeah. I'll sneak that folder in there. And what does that do? That causes the person to say, surely he's not looking up Jimmy Donaldson nudes on, yeah. on <laughs> Google or something like that. Yeah. And they run to the comments. They say, anyone else see this folder? Are we not going to talk about this yeah. thing? They rewatch it to make sure that they actually saw this. Their their brain didn't just immediately go to the gutter. And so it increases my watch duration, my replay uh, views. It increases my comments. It causes uh, comment strings of other people that say, oh, I thought I was the only one that noticed that. Yeah. And it also adds insider language, uh, which is another really cool thing. It's a It's a recurring Easter egg on all my content now. So people come to the, uh, they they leave those hateful comments. And so people will uh, respond to them that are regular fans and say, first time here, huh? Yeah. So they're in on the inside. So too. your regular fans know that like the Easter egg is like, what's the folder going to say? Yes. It could exactly. say something like uh, Hunter Biden's laptop files. Yes. Yeah, exactly. And, and then people are like, oh my gosh. But then your, your fans know, but new people are like, yeah. what? And that whole thing is you're triggering engagement. Yep and you're trolling the trolls and you're, you're internetting at a very high level. Are you ready to start or grow your YouTube channel? Do you feel stuck and need help connecting the dots? Join this free web class where you'll learn the step-by-step -step playbook for YouTube success. We've helped thousands of purpose-driven entrepreneurs just like you grow their influence with video. Register today for this exclusive training at thinkmasterclass.com. So that's Thank super powerful you, yeah. and as it's incredible to see what you've done on YouTube, mm -hmm. but what was wild was Michael Stelzner in his keynote was just mentioning your brand blowing up in general. Mm -hmm. And so it's kind of a cool sequence. You you started on TikTok? Yep. So you started on TikTok. A lot of our community have a YouTube first mind. Mm -hmm. And with YouTube shorts, they see, you know, YouTube's a good place to plant your flag for longs and shorts, but there's this evolution of leaning into vertical video. And if mm -hmm. you're creating vertical video assets, you could be sharing those across multiple platforms. You got your TikTok back after it was deleted mm -hmm. twice. Yep. You're doing YouTube shorts, your YouTube's blowing up. But one of the other places where it's going crazy for you is on Facebook, but on a personal page mm -hmm. in professional mode. Yeah. What is that and what happened in this story? Yeah, so Facebook rolled out professional mode, I guess about a year ago uh, at this at this point. Maybe it was a little before then or something. I just got a notification uh, on my Facebook 
uh, you've been invited to join professional mode. So I said, sure, why not? We'll see what this is about. And uh, what it does is it just basically turns your personal profile into like business light. You have access to analytics. You can see, uh, you can monetize your content. So there's Reels a bonus program, which I think they're actually um, taking away, which is really a bummer. But you can set up stars uh, so people can send you money on the content. It unlocks all of these different features where you can get paid to be a, a creator and if you don't have a, a business account. And I think what had happened is when I switched to professional mode, uh, they were rewarding people that, that had switched to that. They're, it's a new feature, they're pushing it, you know, always try out, at least test, adopt the new features that they that they roll out. And it was the same approach. I just used the the top performing videos uh, that were working really well for me on uh, TikTok and on YouTube and Instagram as well. And it started to build momentum. The, the first couple of reels didn't do that well, but uh, Mike showed in the opening keynote, I think video four did a couple hundred thousand views. And so I stuck with it and kept going and daily upload, daily upload, I just doubling down on, on what's working. And what happens is they, they'll they send you a notification every day of uh, an increased exposure uh, notification. So basically you're creating content that people are engaging with, that's what they want. They reward you with increased reach. And so I'm on, right now, I'm on like a 66, 67 day streak uh, of increased exposure and increased reach. And so I just do that every day. I, I upload uh, Facebook Reels um, and I do probably four to five text-based posts as well because people follow you from Reels. It brings in a massive organic uh, reach, brand new audience in, and then re-engage them with other content on your page so they get to know you a little bit more. They're, reg they're regularly engaging with your other content. So it's going to raise all boats with the tide. All of, When you occasionally sell on, on Facebook or you have an offer, you, you post something out there. If people are already engaging with all of your other posts, they're going to see that other stuff too. Wow. And so what were the results of your growth and followership now this is your personal page, turn it into professional mode, you start posting reels, you're doing these text posts, what was the growth? So right now I'm at 770,000 uh, followers. I'm gaining uh, about 170,000 followers a month right now. The organic reach is uh, is 19.5 million. Uh, <laughs> yeah, it's wild. <laughs> it's great to see. And, yeah. and when you also say these text posts, you find the ones that work the best is when you take like a question, a sentence, and turn it into a color, bigger rectangle yeah. with the text in the middle so it kind of stands out in the feed. What are some of the thinking you have about what how you're trying to engage with those text posts? Like what kind of questions are you throwing out there? So some of them are just getting to know the audience a little bit more, a little bit of pre-qualifying, getting to see like what their pain points are, uh, what their beliefs are, morals, ethics, all this stuff so that I can further create better content that's interesting to them. Asking them questions like, what's their biggest problem in, in their business? What useful websites would be helpful to them? But then I also get a little controversial. And so one sort of finesse that I've found over the last year is that if you make sort of absolute statements that inspire one group, but another group disagrees with, and you sort of just put it out there in a, in a black and white way, you're going to engage both sides. You're going to get the people that that are going to share that content, that are going to engage on that and say, I really needed to hear this message today. Thank you for that. That hit me to the core. And then other people are the contrarians, the the trolls are just, they just have different varying opinions uh, from your personal beliefs. And, uh, and they'll run to the comments and assert their stuff. Like, here's why that's wrong. Here's a, a long paragraph. Yeah. Right. And it engages both sides. Mm. So I'm not catering to one individual person. I'm reaching and trying to encourage engagement from everybody. And that's worked incredibly well. Wow. I mean, this is some massive growth, 700,000 followers, Facebook Reels, blowing it up on TikTok or Facebook page, professional mode, personal page, YouTube's blowing up. And so, of course, we're gonna link everything up in the show notes mm -hmm. so people can also go check out and you would see you creating content in the real world because there's a lot to learn from your growth. And I think that's kind of exciting too because you didn't start 10 years ago, or you may have, but you you didn't experience this growth because it, like it's all happened in the short window of time, mm -hmm. in a recent window of time. So it's like the creator economy is alive and well. Yeah. Social media is alive and well. I've met so many people at this conference who since 2020 has really been the run. The pandemic mm -hmm. kind of disrupted things, shifted them into a new mode. And now they're speaking at this event. Mm -hmm. Makes me think, like, imagine... You could be speaking in the social media marketing world in 12 to 24 months 
on the other side of taking massive action. And uh, you've been really modeling that. So how can people check out what you're doing, learn more from you? Or we will, of course, link those things up in the show notes. Yeah. So thank you so much for having me, Sean. This is amazing. Yeah. And you can not uh, another opportunity is you can have the opportunity to, to talk with Sean. Sean freaking Cannell. Yes, go. Uh, I've been doing social media for 18 years, man. So yeah. it's been it's been wild. It took me a long time. Uh, but yeah, in, in two years, your growth can absolutely change your life. And you can connect with me and find out what I'm doing at Socialty Pro. But I just want to thank you for the opportunity, man. Well, I appreciate that. And then that right there is kind of the icing on the cake because the breakthrough is all, I mean, it, I didn't even know who you were. And Michael Stelzer messaged you, my mind is blown we meet at the speaker party. I'm like, bro, you have to come on the podcast. And, and I'm and seeing just the excellence of your work. It's really cool. It's, it's super inspiring. But, and it wasn't really the last two years. Yeah. I mean, I've been playing, it, it's not a get rich over sure. quick scheme overnight. But 16 years yeah. of, of the roots going down to all of a sudden just shoots up. Yeah. And really the last two years has been the viral growth. Yeah. So, I mean, something clicks. Uh, I've been studying YouTube. I've, I'm a big Think Media fan for a long time. I've read uh, your book uh, like four times as yeah. I was telling you last night. Big, big fan, man. Uh, and yeah, something, something just clicks. It, w- it was like uh, I was waiting my whole life for short form content to come out Mm. because it's just how my crazy ADHD brain works. I still am on the path of uh, long form content success, but that's just nothing that came easy to me. Yeah. So it's all about testing different formats, testing different uh, delivery styles, seeing what works best for you and and going all in. And short form video just clicked with me almost immediately. And so when that rolled out, you know, three and a half years ago, I got started on TikTok, had a little bit of momentum but it's really only been the last two years that there's been this exponential growth and uh, my life's changed. Man, Austin, appreciate you. Thank you so much for coming on the Think Media Podcast.